اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم In this session, we are going to look into structural model analysis. As part of structural equation modeling, we have to test two models. The first one is measurement model and the second one is structural model. As part of measurement model analysis, we assess the quality criteria that is the factor loadings, the, com the construct reliability that includes cron batch alpha and composite reliability. And finally, we assess the model or the constructs for construct validity that includes convergent validity and discriminant validity. Once the validation process is complete, the next step is structural model analysis, that is to test whether the proposed hypotheses are significant or not. Full structural model analysis. Now a full structural model assesses the relationship between constructs but also includes the measurement indicators for each variable. Now here are the indicators, the error terms, the latent variables and how they are interrelated with each other. A full structure model will allow you to account for measurement error. Here are your measurement errors in a construct indicators while assessing the relationship between the latent variables. You will initially draw all the constructs and indicators like you did in CFA. So we add our latent variables with the indicators as we did in our measurement model. Then you will start including the direct paths between the construct that is how the latent variables are related with each other. This is more robust model and will account for each indicator individually as well. Now here is the model that I am interested in testing, the impact of organizational learning and collaborative culture on organizational performance. Now how do I run it? Now previously I did this measurement model. I had collaborative culture, organizational commitment and organizational performance, the constructs in my study. Now the proposed model as we've saw, seen as, as we have seen earlier had CC OC influencing OP. Now whenever you're doing such a study with any kind of model, if you are using CBSCM or any other SCM based tool, the first step is measurement model analysis. Now in this case, if you are using CBSCM, you add your construct and co-vary them and assess them for reliability and validity. I've already done this in a previous session, so the video will be shared in the description. Now moving on, now I'm interested in running my structure model to find out whether the OC and CC influence OP or not. Now here is my model. Now you do the same thing in order to create this model. Now let me do it quickly. Let's say CBSCM. Now here is the model. What need to do, what I need to do is add CC here then add OC and finally we'll add OP. Now let's move the indicators to the left, to the left. Now it's, they're covering the indicator, let's move them again. Here. Now connect them. Now, since this is covariance or covariance based SCM, we will need to correlate the exogenous variables like this. Now, this is the model that I wanted to test the impact of CC and OC on OP. Now, to run this model, again, the first step is to check for model fit. So go to calculate basic CBSCM algorithm. Let's start with the defaults. Now here are my results. Look at the model fit. Well, this is poor. This is acceptable. Poor, poor. Well, this is less than five, so we can say it is acceptable. However, how to improve the model fit? We are going to look into this in coming sessions. Now that I've assessed my model fit, and this can be referred to as a poor fit, the next step is to assess the relationship, whether these relationships are significant or not. To do so, I will go to calculate CBSCM bootstrapping. 
Now the normal recommendation is 5000 to 10,000. For now, for the sake of this video, I'm just going to keep it to 500 so that we get our results in a faster manner. Bias corrected and accelerated bootstrap to get a more stable solution, one tailed because I have proposed a positive relationship between CC and OP and OC and OP. And let's start. Now here are the results. If you look here, the inner model, these are p-values, outer model, p-values, let's change it, let's do standardized path coefficients and t-values and I do not need anything in my outer model so I'm just going to hide my indicators, hide indicators, hide indicators, hide indicators. We normally show the indicators in the measurement model. Now this is path coefficients and t-value. The t-value is greater than 1.645. It's significant because I'm using one tailed test. So for one tailed, the threshold for t statistic is 1.645. Both of them are significant. Look at this path coefficients. Here it is. Significant, significant because less than 0 0.05. So the impact of CC on OP this is the beta coefficient 0.273 which is the weight of impact is quite good. The T statistics is greater than 1.645 and P value is less than 0.05. This shows CC has a significant and positive impact. Because there is no sign it means positive. What about OC and OP? Positive? Yes. This is good. The weight of impact is good. Is it significant? Well, yes, the T statistics shows that the relationship is significant. Why? Because the T statistics is greater than 1.645. P value is less than 0 0.05. So this shows that both of our hypothesized relationships are significant. Now, this was the model fit we saw earlier. Now, again, our path coefficients, we can see that they were significant. Now, one more thing I would like to identify here is so you've got these path coefficients these are unstandardized and these are the standardized path coefficients so we normally uh, go for standardized ones then reporting our results so go for standardized path coefficients now they help you in making the comparison or the comparison as to how the predictors impact the outcome now OC has a higher impact on OP in comparison to CC. So path coefficient, this is unstandardized, this is standardized. So we report these standardized weights so that you can compare the strength of relationships. In, the, in both cases, they are significant. Moving on, now R square square multiple correlation. Now where is your R square? So this is your R square. So, 47.3% change in OP is being accounted by OC and CC. Where is it in Smart PLS? So you can see that it's not here. Look at this. It's not here. So where is your R square? Go back. Open your CBSCM results. Open report. And here is your R square. 0.469. This is your R square value. This shows that 46.9% change. So if you convert it into percentage, this shows that 46.9% change in OP is being accounted by CC and OC. Moving on. This is slightly different. I may have run the different data set on uh, when I was taking the screenshot. But anyways, this is how you interpret it. So how do I report my full structure model analysis results? With the structure model, it is a good idea to present standardized regression weights, t-values, model fit statistics, and r-square values. I like to present r-square values of the dependent construct so the reader can see how much variance in the dependent variable is being explained by the predictors or the independent variables. I also like to state if my hypothesis was supported or not. I feel like there is no need to present the measurement indicators again because you should have presented this with your measurement model. So you do not need to present your measurement indicators and their loadings again when running the structural model results. Ultimately, you want to say a lot in a little amount of space. Presenting your results in a table should be done in a manner 
where the reader can see all the necessary information to determine the final results of your SCM test. This is not the only way to present structural results, but it is a good template that I'm going to present. Now, how do we report our structural model analysis? This is a template. I'm just going to quickly go through it. A structural equation model was generated through CBSCM in Smart PLS to test the relationship. A good fitting model is accepted if the value of C min is less than five. Now, next we report our goodness of fit, the Tucker-Lewis index and the confirmatory fit index. And this is good if it is greater than 0.90. In addition to, or in addition, an adequate fitting model was accepted. In this case, it was not. Now, In addition, an adequate fitting model was accepted if the computed value of SRM on now there are other statistics as well that you will look into when you are assessing your model fit. When your SRMR and RMSCA have got these values. The fit indices for this model, now here are your fit indices for this model. So where are they? Here they are. And we looked into this in Smart PLS as well. So you just need to copy those values here. The square multiple correlation, that is your R square was this for organizational performance. This shows that the, what was your R square value? 0.469. So 0.469. For organizational performance, this shows that 46.9%. Variance in OP. I'm using an earlier template. So going to edit it is accounted by OC and CC. So this is how you can report your structural model, but we haven't reported the hypothesis yet. So have a look here. The study assessed the impact of OC and CC on OP. The impact of OC on OP was positive and significant. So where are my beta values, T values and P values? So here are my beta values. Let's go back and open our bootstrapping results open and here are my standardized beta value t statistics and p value you just need to copy this and put it into that template here and similarly you have to do it for cc and op as well so this is how you can report your structural model analysis results i hope this session would have helped you understand how to run a structural model in smart pls and how to report the results thank you very much